Yo, YTBC, it's me coming at you again with another vid. This time I wanted to um, highlight a fighter who no one really talks about nowadays, who pretty much has been overlooked, and that fighter is Terrible Terry Norris. If y'all don't know who Terrible Terry Norris is, um, this guy was explosive, um, great footwork, and amazing hand speed and power. And just think of him, think of him as the first ever Keith Thurman in my eyes. But, you know, before I get into all that, I just want to just overlook his career and see, you know, just to, just to highlight what he's done. Okay. Now, you know, Terry Norris started his career back in 1986. And, you know, he uh, bypassed his, uh, as a promising career as a baseball star um, to go into boxing. So he started his career with 12 straight wins. Um, I think what six knockouts here, I believe, and you know he first loss came to unanimous decision by the name of Derek Kelly, and then the second loss came by DQ. Then after that, he won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight straight fights until he got his his first big title fight. His first ever title fight was against Julian Jackson back in 1989 or July 30th, 1989. Uh, yes, he was giving um, Jackson some problems early in the fight. But the thing about Norris is this, um, despite his hand speed, despite his great footwork and power, his Achilles heels has always been his chin. Because whenever he got rocked, man, his punch resistance was terrible. It just literally, literally, he would just get stunned on every punch that you threw, clean shot you threw at him. Now, for example, in the Julian Jackson fight, Julian Jackson just hit, <laughs> just hit him with a straight right cross and then finished him off with another right hook. I mean, damn, he, Norris was out cold in that damn fight and I, I felt sorry for him because I, I really you know I saw a promising kid at that time I thought that you know what this was the guy who was gonna you know who was gonna be on the top but you know honestly after that Julian Jackson fight as a kid I didn't really could see how he could recover from that but apparently he did um you know after the Julian Jackson fight he won three straight fights against um Nathan Dreyer Jorge Vaca and Tony Montgomery and then he got his next title shot against John the Beast Mugabe. Now, if y'all don't remember John Beast Mugabe, John the Beast Mugabe was a guy who took Marvin Hagler to hell in, in 11 rounds in 1986, I believe. And uh, he, at the time, had the record of 25, 25 and 0 with 25 KLs. And, you know, a lot of people thought that Hagler was going to, he was going to kill Hagler based off the fact that he was a much bigger and powerful guy. But anyhow, uh, Norris went in there annihilated uh, Mugabe, wiped him out in the first round. And I was pretty shocked to see that on Worldwide Sports. I was like, damn. I, and I was like, how is Norris going to fight, beat a guy like this, especially the fact that he doesn't have a chin? But he got to him first, knocked him out with a couple rights, and then finished him off with a flurry of powerful punches and knocked him down in the second round, and that was the end of the fight. And uh, Mugabe, I'm sorry, not Mugabe, then Norris became the WBC uh, light middleweight champion. Then uh, after that, he got his first uh, title defense against Rene Jacquard. I'm sorry, I'm butchering his name. Uh, he fought him in his backyard, his whole country in um, in France, which many fighters don't do nowadays because um, <laughs> they always want to get the home field advantage thanks to Floyd Mayweather's uh, influence. Uh, then after that, he uh, took on the legendary Sugar Ray Leonard. And to me... <laughs> To me, this was the fight that I honestly did not want to see, and I was very, very, it was very emotional and painful, painful for me to watch this fight because if you look at that fight, Sugar Ray Leonard way drained himself to, to go to, to 154 to take on Norris, and and I applaud Sugar Ray because he actually wanted to, you know, thought he, you know, he wanted to test himself against a young, dangerous fighter like Norris, and he went in there and got his ass beat, man. He got the, his the. Dog should be out. No, excuse my language. He got knocked down twice in that fight. I mean, there was times in that fight, dude. I was looking. I was like, oh my god. I was like, ref, stop the fight because Sugar Ray looked so battered. He looked so, you know, um, disarrayed. He looked. I mean, he just didn't know where he was. We were getting clipped those by those rights by Norris. Man, Norris was just was hitting him with powerful combos left and right. I'm like, oh my goodness. But you know. Of course, that's the first time we ever seen Sugar Ray battered like that in any fight. 
um, before they had the Camacho fight when his, um, you know, his second comeback. But, uh, yeah, it was it was terrible to watch, man. I mean, it was terrible. It was sad because it was my idol, a guy that I watch. Not my idol, but he was a guy that I revere a lot. He was my fa- one of my favorite fighters of all time. And for him to be battered like that by um, Norris was... <laughs> It was it was sad, man. And you know I can't blame Norris for that, but he did what he had to do. Uh, he went in there and, and dismantled a legend. But you know it is what it is. But hats off to um, Norris for this you know biggest victory of his career, which pretty much set you know set in stone his you know his Hall of Fame status. And Sugar Ray, like I said, he went in there and gave a young guy a shot, a dangerous guy a shot, and he you know tested himself. But obviously he didn't have what it takes anymore. So I give Sugar Ray a lot of credit for that. And then after that, he uh, fought Donald Curry, who was a former um, undisputed. Hold on, here, I'm going to turn on the air here because it's kind of cold. <laughs> I'm sorry, hot. Uh, then after that, his next title defense was against Donald Curry, uh, another dangerous opponent, but man, pretty much a faded Donald Curry, um, former um, undisputed welterweight champion, and at one time was a light middleweight champion. Uh, the, the Donald Curry, who really got destroyed, who got <laughs> destroyed by Lloyd Hannigan and. Uh, 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 Mike McCallum, but you know, other day he did go in there, and dismantle him, and knocked him out in eight rounds. And then after that, he had um, took on. Well, after that, he had nine straight title defenses, and in between those title defenses, he had fought Meldrick Taylor, another shot fighter. After the Caesar Chavez fight, and you know that was a that was that was brutal because Taylor didn't even stand a chance against uh, Norris. But hey, give him credit. You know, he went in there and knocked him out. Then he fought Maurice Blocker, another former champion, though he knocked out in the second round. And this fight right here was interesting after the Maurice Blocker fight. He fought a guy named uh, Troy Waters out of Australia. And a lot of people like to bring up the uh, Hagler and Hearns fight because that fight was a war straight out from, you know, only lasted in three rounds. But if you take a look at that uh, that uh, Norris and Waters fight, believe me, man, that was a replica of the – of the Hearns and Hagler fight. I'll tell you that right now because Norris knocked down Waters in the fight, right? In the first round. In the second round, Waters came back with a straight right and knocked him down and had Terry Norris buzz. But see, at that time, you you knew Norris had a, had a had a very, very weak chin. So a lot of people felt that, oh, he's gonna go, he's gonna go, but he came back and got his uh ref- you know, got his legs back under him and he started to batter the crap out of Waters. But at the same time, in the third round came about, his corner saw that Waters couldn't go anymore. He was completely battered on the third round. But at the same time, dude, you got to give him, give my hats off to Waters because he went there and fought like a warrior against a guy who pretty much <laughs> they didn't think he stood a chance against, but he actually knocked him down and gave him a good fight in the first three rounds. But it was an all-out war. But Jesus Christ. All right. After that, he fought Joe Gotti, who's the older brother of uh, – Arturo Gotti, God rest his soul, but he went here and dismantled him in the first round, so no competition there. Then after that, he went in there against Simon Brown, a former champion, and Simon Brown was a was a very big underdog in his fight. And Simon Brown knocked out Terry Norris in the, in the four rounds, and that was the upset of the year at that time. And then he had a, a tuna fight before he got his rematch at uh, Simon Brown, and he beat him in a um, in the Armas decision. In his next fight, oh my God, I'm not sure everybody's gonna remember this, but if you uh, recall a name of a fighter by the name of Luis Sant- uh, Santi- uh, Santana, please look him up because this is one of the most disgraceful, disgraceful things I've ever seen. In the first fight, um, Norris fought Luis Santana in Mexico City, home of the WBC. <laughs> he fought him in Mexico City. In five rounds, they went at it, and then Norris. I got DQ because he allegedly hit uh, Lu- uh, Luis, uh, Luis Santana in the back of the head. And La Santana went down the ground. He looked unconscious, whatnot, blah, blah, blah. But what's so strange about that situation is there was three people that were attending Santana, but there was no doctor to take a look at him. What the fuck? No doctor to take a look at him. You know, the, the announcer's like, what the hell's going on? Why is there no doctor to check on Santana? So, ultimately, Norris got disqualified for that fight. He lost his title. Santana, well, you can see, if you take a look at it, he was carried from the stretcher. You can see that he popped a smile when he was carried away. 
and you could tell that motherfucker was faking it because there was no fucking way you got. I mean, you could look at the punch. The punch didn't even land in the back of his head where it had enough force in it, man. Get the fuck out of here, man. You want to talk about Bernard Hawkins fucking, um, you know, faking injuries to get out of fights or trying to buy some time. This is motherfucking Luis Santana did that shit not only once. He did it again in the second fight when him and Norris fought, you know, and Caesar Spouse. At this time, you know, it was another DQ in the third round. But, you know, that situation was kind of a little odd because Kenny Bayless at the time was the referee. And uh, when the bell rung, you know, he was separating the two men. And then Santana walked up to Norris like he was about to ready fight him. And, you know, of course, Norris was, you know, up for his guard and then punched him out, which got him DQ'd. And, of course, Santana <laughs> faked that shit again, you could tell. And then the third fight at the MGM Grand, I think this was the undercard on the Tyson and McNeely fight when Tyson was coming back, you know, his first fight from prison. But in the third fight, uh, Norris fought Santana again, and then he knocked him out in the second round. And I'm glad Tor Norris got some justice for that because for him to go through hell like that against this guy who repeatedly faked injuries to get out of fights and retain his title, that was complete mistake. So, man, I'm glad Santana was gone, man, because – how the fuck are you going to do some shit like that put a guy through a situation like that? In fact, he was a cab driver, and Norris had to go through that situation. And Norris was bad at him after the fight, and I don't blame him. <laughs> so, again, just take a look at the Terry Norris and Luis Santana um, saga, man. That was just way distasteful. And then after that, um, Norris had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine straight more title defenses. And, and then he ultimately lost uh, his title... Um, at the time, he was a linear and IBF champion, and of course, the IBF stri stripped him from the, um, you know, stripped him from his title. And then he fought Keith Mullins, a future world champion. And he, and he, Mullins knocked him out in the ninth round. Then he lost to Dana Rosablot in the you know, decision. Then he got uh, KO, TKO for the middleweight title, WBA middleweight title by Laurent Bordiade in France. So there you have it. You know, terrible Terry Norris had a great career. You know, Hall of Famer, no doubt. He got inducted in two thousand five. But before I get into all that, before I close this out, I wanted to say that if Norris had beat um, Bodandi or Laurent Bodandi, I'm butchering his name, if he had beaten him, people don't know this. He was scheduled to fight Felix Trinidad in a super fight, <laughs> which I should do another video on because I want to see who would have took in that fight. Would Norris would have took in that fight against Trinidad? I mean, or would Trinidad would have beat Norris? I mean, that's a toss up to me, but we'll see. But. That's a fact that people don't know. But to close this video out, I have to say that Norris had a great career. Again, he was a Hall of Famer. 2005, he got into the Hall of Fame. But unfortunately, due to years of fighting and the years of punishment that he took, um, he, he has speech, uh, speech slur, so he is brain damaged. So it is a sad case, but you can't take away his warrior's heart because this man fought everybody. He fought the best there was. He fought guys in their backyard. He had long string of title defenses when he fought in light middleweight and i mean what i mean what else can you say he's beat many former champions he bought he beat a legendary champion sugar ray leonard um so i mean there you have it um another thing i want to add is that recently he made some comments about floyd mayweather all right he said that mayweather is not tbe because how can you be tbe where you're choosing fights and you're not fighting mandatories in a tough competition which is clearly true and I see motherfuckers who are defending Floyd commenting on, on on the it was on Ellie Setback's um, video, commenting on that video talking about well that's the reason why your ass is, is fucked up now. You how you gonna talk shit about Floyd? Blah blah blah. You all punch drunk and shit. I'm like you motherfuckers. First of all, let me tell you something. Terry Norris is more of a man than fucking Floyd Mayweather. Okay, at least he went in there and fought, got went in dangerous fights. Like in, 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 you know, unlike Floyd, who was unable, who didn't want to do that and was unwilling to do that. Okay. <laughs> So, you know, don't don't say, you know, disrespect the man who actually put in more work than what Floyd did. OK, so, you know, that there you have it. Um, let me know what you think. Care to comment, describe. I'm sorry, <laughs> butchering myself. Care to comment, subscribe, signing off. Peace.